now know how to identify and name hydrocarbons which are alkanes or classified as alkanes. But how do we name molecules, specifically hydrocarbons, which are classified as alkenes or alkynes? The rule for these two remaining hydrocarbons are the same. So that means the rules for one applies to the other one. In naming alkenes and alkynes, we will still follow the previous rules but with some additional rules to remember. Okay? So take a look at these two examples here and you will observe that the two molecules contain double bonds. So the first molecule has a double bond, the other molecule also has a double bond and both of them only includes carbon and hydrogen atoms. That is why we classify them as hydrocarbons, more specifically alkenes. Now how do we name alkenes? Now looking again at the two molecules, you will observe that though they are both alkenes, there is a difference between these two molecules. You will notice that the position of the double bonds between the two molecules differ from one another. For our first molecule, the double bond is located at one end of the carbon chain, while the other one has a double bond embedded within the carbon chain. So now, let's see how their names are. Whatever rule we will mention here applies also to alkynes. Okay, so the first one is to name the parent chain just by simply finding first the longest carbon chain. Now, the first molecule, if you're going to make a line encompassing all the carbons, you will find that all the carbons can be put in a single line. That means we don't have any branch. Therefore, we don't need to proceed with step number three. What about for the second one? The second molecule also has carbons that can be put in a single line. No more carbons out from the parent chain, meaning to say we don't have any branches also in the second molecule. Now, we now know that step number three will be excluded in these examples. So let's proceed with step one and step number two. Step number one is to name the parent chain, which includes the longest carbon chain. Now, before you make a line identifying where the branch chain is, there is one additional requirement, which is make sure that the carbons that are included in the double or triple bond are included in the parent chain. What do you mean by that? So in our example, whenever we, we identify the longest carbon chain, we just find the chain which will have as many carbons as we can. But in this rule for alkenes and alkynes, the double bond or the triple bond must be included in the parent chain. So in our first molecule, this carbon here, and the carbon here are the ones that share a double bond. So meaning to say, when we make a line, these two carbons must be included, okay? For the second one, the carbon here and the carbon here share a double bond. So meaning to say, when we make a parent chain or a line, the two must be part of that line. Next one, let's name the parent chain. So the parent chain that we have for the first molecule, we have one, two, three, four carbon atoms. Therefore, we will use the prefix but. Now, this example here has a double bond. That means what we have is an alkene. Therefore, we will use the suffix ene. What about the second one? The second molecule has also four carbons in it. So that's but for its prefix. And since it has a double bond, we will use the suffix E and E. So, so far, if you notice, they are the same. Next one. We are now going to assign numbers to the carbons in the parent chain. So, how do we now assign numbers in the carbons in the parent chain? To assign numbers to the carbons in the parent chain, what we will consider 
is the presence of the double or triple bond. Meaning to say, if the double bond is near to the left, then we start counting on the left. If it's near on the right, then we start counting from the right, okay? Now for our first molecule, the double bond, which is this one, is nearer to the left. So therefore, we will write one, two, three, four, okay? Now for the second molecule, you will notice that the double bond is exactly at the middle of the parent chain. Therefore, if the double bond or the triple bond is exactly at the middle, we can start either from the left or to the right. In this kind of situation, I prefer to start counting from the left. One, two, three, and four. The next thing is to tell the readers where the double bond is located. Now, for molecule number one, the double bond is located in between carbons one and two. While for the second molecule, it is found in between carbons two and carbon number three. Now, which of the two numbers will you be using to identify the location of the double bond. Will you use the lower number, which is in this case the 1, in this case the 2, or will you use the higher number, which is in this first molecule, the number 2, while here the number 3? The rule is, in identifying the location of the double bond or the triple bond, we will always use the lesser number. So that means, in our first molecule, the double bond is located in carbon number one while in the second molecule the double bond is located in carbon number two so how do we now write it if the double bond is located at carbon number one what you are supposed to write is this take a look you will write butte and then dash then one and then the suffix E N E. So what is the meaning of this? It means to say but, meaning to say the parent chain has four carbon atoms, and one in meaning to say the double bond is located in carbon number one. But if the double bond is located in carbon number one, what scientists agreed is to just simply drop the number. So what you will write is simply butene. Again, you will only drop the number if the double bond or the triple bond is located at carbon number one. It's just saying that it's understood that when you write butene, the double bond is located in carbon number one. What about for the second one? So we know that the, that the parent chain is butene. Now, we need to tell the readers that the double bond is located at carbon number 2. So what we will write, just like the previous one, we will write but dash, then indicate where the double bond is, use the lesser number, 2, then in. Okay? Now, since the number is not 1, we will not drop it off, just like the previous one. But instead maintain or retain hence the name of our second molecule is but to in let's try some examples to see how these rules apply to the other alkenes and alkynes for our next example we have here a molecule that contains a triple bond not only one but two triple bonds the rule is still the same so let's begin using the first step, which is identifying the parent chain. But always remember, the parent chain that you will choose must include the carbons in the double and in triple bond. We are lucky enough because in our example, the carbons in the triple bonds, which are the carbons that I'm pointing right now, are actually part of the parent chain, which is this parent chain here. And if you notice, all the carbons are included in the line. That means we don't have a branch. We can forego step number three. Now let's name the parent chain. 
our parent chain includes one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. Therefore, we will be using the prefix pent. And to indicate that our compound has a triple bond, we will be using the suffix YNE. Next one. Let's now assign the numbers to the carbons in the parent chain. We will prioritize the side where the triple bond is nearer. We have two triple bonds in our molecule and the one which is nearer to one of the side is this triple bond located nearer to the right side. Therefore, in assigning numbers for this molecule, what we will have is starting from the right, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we are done with step one and step number two. And don't forget, you must tell the readers where we can find the triple bond, in this case, the triple bonds. Therefore, we must identify what carbons are they located. Choose the lower value. Our carbon or the carbons in the first triple bond is in between carbons 1 and carbon 2. So we will choose carbon number 1. And then for the second triple bond, it is in between carbons 3 and 4. We will choose carbon number 3. Therefore, what should we write as our answer? What we will have is pent, then dash, then indicate where are the triple bonds located using the lesser value. We will have 1 and we have 3. And just like multiple number of branches, we will use also the prefixes. So to tell the readers that there are two triple bonds indicated by the two numbers here, what we will write is the prefix di and then the yne for the triple bond. What we have so far is pent 1, 3, di, in. Can we drop the 1 and just simply write pent 3 di in? The answer is no. You can only drop number 1 if there is no number beside it. Since our example here has 3 together with the 1, you cannot drop the 1. Again, if it's only 1, you can just simply write pent 9. But since the 3 is together with the 1, no dropping of 1. Now, we use the suffix die because we have two numbers here, the 1 and the 3. So let's say, for example, you have three triple bonds present, then you will write th the three numbers, then the prefix try. If you have four triple bonds or four double bonds, then use the prefix tetra. Bottom line is, if you have more than one number here as the number, use the appropriate prefixes. Therefore, the name of our compound is pent 1, 3, di, ein. For our last example, let's combine the branches and the double or triple bonds. For our last example, let's see how to name a hydrocarbon which has a double bond and branches. For our example, we will be using this molecule. Step number one is to identify the parent chain which includes the double bond, which in this case, this line of carbons here. Okay, next one is to name it. We have here a chain of seven carbons. Therefore, we will be using the prefix hept. And then, since it has a double bond, in. Now, let's assign numbers to our parent chain. Now, which one should we prioritize? The location of the double bond or the location of the branches? What we will prioritize is the location of the double bond. Our double bond in our molecule is located near the left. So therefore, the counting is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay. And then let's complete the heptin because we need to show to the reader that the double bond is located at carbon number 2. Write the word hept. 
and then the carbon where the double bond is located two and the suffix e and e next let's name the branches we have a branch at carbon number five we have another branch at carbon number five and we have a branch at carbon number four so let's name them first individually the first branch which is attached to carbon number five is five methyl now the second branch here below is also found at carbon number five and it is also a methyl while the last branch located at carbon number four has two carbons in it it is a four ethyl and do not forget when you write the branches which are different from one another you write them alphabetically therefore we start writing the four ethyl then separate it with a dash and then let's include the two methyls that are both found at carbon number five if you have this scenario we're in the two similar branches are of the same carbon atoms you need to write the two numbers which are five and five for example let's say there are three methyls in one let's say one carbon which is let's say let's assume carbon number two so you need to write two 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 okay no shortcut and then since we have two methyls since we have two numbers also then we use the prefix die and then indicate what branch is that which is a methyl so to complete the name just combine the word these words here and you will have the name of your molecule which is 4 ethyl 5 5 dimethyl hep 2 in a mouthful word right and that is how you name hydrocarbons even if it's an alkane alkene or alkyne the rule includes only three steps with an exception if there is a presence of a double and triple bond it takes practice to master this skill and i hope this one gives you an idea on how diverse carbon molecules are tell me pretty lies look me in the face tell me that you love me even if